Well, uh, what's going to happen today is probably the most important part of the entire festival. You know, two days, 20, 30 bands. But the uh, Ben and Iden Green Big Ukulele Jam is playing uh, first on the second stage today. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's the key uh, thing because it's the one that I play in. Um, and uh, there was some talk of dropping us, but um, I said, if you want to use my field for your festival again, you're jolly well going to let us play uh, our ukuleles. So uh, we're not expecting a very large audience. In fact, we're not expecting an audience at all. But anyone that's hanging around the bar might just have to listen to us, you know, for a while. It's part of this whole two-day thing that's now been going for 13 years, is it? I think this is the... 13th year, but the 12th festival, like Glastonbury, we took a year off, you know, just to, to rest and recuperate. Uh, but we're, we're back. And it started when uh, a friend of mine, uh, who's a member of the Grateful Dead uh, Traders Society, European Traders Society, uh, came to a party of mine, looked at the field and said, wow, how about having some couple of Grateful Dead cover bands there for one of our, one of our do's? And I said, well, I suppose no harm. And that started the first year as a tiny little uh, little gathering, a one-day gathering, and it's grown and grown and grown. And then we got the second stage, built the second stage uh, for some uh, non-Grateful Dead bands, uh, you know, and more modern stuff and more local stuff. Uh, and that's what's happening. And it's uh, it's just a fantastic fun and a huge variety of music. We are the Benenden and Iden Green Ukulele Jam, and uh, we shorten that to the Big Ukulele Jam. And that's who we are. Is that okay? Woo! What are we doing? Hooray! <laughs> and we're, what we're doing this, uh, this morning is, uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was suggested that maybe we should do all the songs that were sung at Woodstock. Oh, not all the songs? <laughs> no, not all the songs that were sung at Woodstock. <laughs> but all the songs in our set would be ones that were sung at Woodstock. And for some reason, that ended up being policy. So about three days ago, we decided to learn them. And... Uh, <laughs> And here we are. One, two, three, four.
A lot of the older people here are here because they, they developed an interest in festivals back in those days. Um, not much at all about Woodstock, other than I think um, the Who's Bob O'Reilly is said to be based on that festival. So it's meant to be a wild one, that's all I know. That's all I know. <laughs> Why are you here? Um, we come every year, been for the last 12 years as a family. Um, well, for every year, so every 12 years. Um, and it's, it's just a nice atmosphere, it's fun just to come in camp out and chill out and listen to the music. And the food's good. <laughs> Honestly, just for us, it's kind of more of a tradition thing 
than anything else because we've been coming a lot. It's dad's sort of music, so we come along, kind of chill out with him for the weekend. Um, but it's nice, it's different to other festivals that we normally go to. Well, it is the festival out of every, any festival. This is the festival. It's the right size, the right people, the right vibe, the right music, the right everything. People are wonderful. They literally are wonderful, actually. No lies. <laughs> Oh, 
broken chain Sorrow and gloves Unbroken chain of sky and sea Unbroken chain of the winds and wind Yeah, so were 500,000 other people. It's not a unique position, believe me. Why did you go in those days? What was it that, that took you there? And they paid me. <laughs> um, I was in a band, I was performing, and I got paid. Well, I was supposed to get paid, I didn't get paid, but later I got paid because this movie came out, a, re a record came out, and I got a bunch of money. So. Yeah. In those days, we thought we could change the world with, with music and with peace and no war and love. And... If that's what you thought, you were naive. I was naive. Yeah. Well, were most of us naive in those days? Though? No, I don't think so. I think there were a lot of pragmatic people. I, I think we had aspirations, but I don't think the aspirations were necessarily the reality that we thought we were in. What reality did you think you were in? Uh, you know, 1969 was a real breather because they had killed Martin Luther King the year before. They'd killed Robert F. Kennedy. There were assassinations, riots in the cities. Uh, we thought the world was coming apart, quite frankly. We didn't think that we were sanguine and there was a reason to believe that we were somehow above it all. It was people power though, wasn't it? People, people said no. Or people said they were pissed off. Yeah, so what? I mean, they didn't pay any attention to us. Uh, it's kind of like now. <laughs> They're not paying much attention to us now. You know. All these years later, you're at a wonderful little friendly, cuddly, fantastic little festival here. What do you think of this little festival? Oh, well, I've been coming here for 15 years or something like that, whatever it is. But uh, this is this is a nice festival. People are, have a good attitude here. It seems to be just fine. I like it a lot. Are you surprised to see so many young people here? Because it's a wonderful mixture of, of older sort of hippies <laughs> and lots of young people and clever music-making young people too. The amazing thing about sex is if you keep doing it, you'll have young people. More and more of them. Yeah. What do you think the world will be like musically in the next 50 years? Um, you know, it'll keep progressing. Uh, that's what happens. It's a natural law of, you know, and it'll address whatever issues need to be addressed. And hopefully musicians will remain in the vanguard and, you know, push things a little bit. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Yeah. Slightly off camera, what do you think of Trump? You can say it on camera or off camera. I don't care whether it's on or off camera. It's a horrible human being. It's too bad we've arrived at that place. I mean, he is a truly horrible human being. And you're not much better off with Boris Johnson. So that's what I think.
carpenter comes and a snail's the right. Walks to the table and he tosses his dice. First passes seven and the table dissolves to the night of the demon and the passage of
the table and he tosses his dice. First pass is seven and the table dissolves. To the night of the demon and the passage of laws. Tell me.
I'm here because I live locally and it's a really great festival. It's fantastic to have something as local as this on our doorstep with such a vibrant and fantastically happening scene and with such a wide range of amazing music down the road. We're we come Pans from Pagans. Portsmouth with Pans Pagans. And we dance for Dub Owl. And we do a lot of festivals. We did one last year yeah. here and you guys liked us so much you booked us again. So yeah. keep going. <laughs> this is a... A love song. I do do them. Now and then. If I can remember this. It's about, I suppose, when you think it's too late. Whether you're in a relationship or whether you're not in a relationship. Of any kind. And as the years go by sometimes, it's... It's gonna happen. You think, I wish I'd done that. I wish I'd said that. I wish... I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I hadn't said that. And sometimes people say to me, have you got many regrets? No, not really. It's been a fantastic, fantastic journey. And I'm sitting here looking at you lot and I can see you've been on one as well. <laughs> We're not in such bad shape, are we? <laughs> not really, no. Anyway, I'm not gonna do that song actually, I'm gonna do something else instead. <laughs> now I said what I just said and about us being in reasonable shape and stuff. It's not so long ago, although it is really, I've been telling this story, you know. People used to say, you're coming round for a smoke. Yeah. Listen to some music. Yeah. Shall I put a record on? Mm. I can't remember where my record player was at the time. Now, of course, vinyl's become fantastically popular again. And I'd sit there having a smoke, and that was the best bit. Listening to Jefferson Starship, Grateful Dead, you know. And occasionally something really fabulous, like Pearls Before Swine, the Balaclava album, you know. But most of the time it was what I'd always listened to, and I thought, this was the soundtrack of me being a kid. And I'm not anymore, you know, I'm listening to oh, everything, dubstep, you know, I love techno, I love that sort of dirty, filthy metal kind of dance thing. And I learned lots of things. I mean, that kid Billy Eilish, who was on Glastonbury this year, yeah. absolutely stunning. The Chemical Brothers stole the show for me, I think, really. And those poor fuckers with Liam Gallagher. I mean, you know, they look so terrified and bored. You couldn't be more disinterested in back in some way, surely. So, you know, people say, don't you think the 70s was the time? And my answer is no. It was good, it was good. I was there. I remember quite a lot of it, although I'm not really supposed to, you know, because I was supposed to be too stoned, etc., etc. But I do remember it, and I remember some wonderful things, but I remember some harsh things and some bad things too. So it was mixed. But the idea that they were the good old days and those that's fixed in stone. No, today, to be alive today must be one of the most interesting and fascinating times, even though we've got the shit to deal with that we have got to deal with. So this is a song called The Good Old Days. The Good Old Days And of a time soon gone Like cherry blossom And the leaves turn brown In the pale sky And it's far out there Watching the white lights go by just like time flies for everybody else And the racing cyclist Still, we are here, we love and breathe Still, we are here Love and breathe. Still, we are here. We love and breathe. 
I hear because I love the Grateful Dead. The music's great, the lyrics are great, they've kept going in various forms, they've managed to find new young people as well as keeping us old ones engaged, it's all, um, it's all just one long flow, it's great. Well you come with some friends who is an absolutely dedicated Dead fan and he's been giving me 
basically all the output of the dead for years and he talked me into coming and I've been a dead fan for years but never had any option to go and see them or come to anything like this so this is our first time first outing for my t-shirt virgin t-shirt getting its first outing and I've had it for years so it's a good opportunity to wear it I'm here because I'm playing with the band and I love the Grateful Dead why do you love the Grateful Dead? I've loved the Grateful Dead since 1971. Any time in my life I have a problem, I go to the Grateful Dead. Because they encapsulate so many different kinds of music, so many moods, etc.
playing um, rock music from, from Woodstock, uh, you know, is just what this festival should be about, just as double or, you know, all the other sort of really interesting people that, um, that have been playing. Uh, the, so uh, I'm delighted. I mean, the, the thrill for me is seeing uh, just so many people enjoying themselves. You know, the, the, the field is empty most of the year. I run the dog out in it and, 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 and walk over it, and you know. And then suddenly for, for three or four days, it's absolutely packed with people who are having fun. Uh, and that's wonderful. And they're very appreciative and very nice and a very gentle crowd. I hope that what people who've been here will take away is uh, just the, the image, the memory of, of, of two days of, uh, of love and peace and music. <laughs>